I'm not crying. You're crying. Hello, everyone. Millennial Movies back here again. Going to be breaking down Episode 7 of Castle Rock as well as talking about the Easter eggs in this episode. So let's just get right into it. This episode completely averted my expectations. I didn't plan on tearing up, but damn it, I did, and I'm not afraid to admit it. The, the journey that Ruth goes through in this episode is simply beauty to behold. As a viewer, getting a glimpse into the daily life of someone with Alzheimer's was really cathartic in a way because you feel bad about her suffering, but at the same time, you get to see her pull herself together to find those bullets, and that felt really good up until the end. Now, it was a wild ride seeing Ruth travel through her mind to try and get the answers from all these memories of hers, and I think it was expertly crafted. Um... I mean, everything from her talking to Wendell and, 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 and him playing that game where he talks about how, you know, uh, I think it's like skinwalkers or something and how you they can never die and you can you can kill your nemesis to fix the timeline. And for and for Ruth in her mind, space and time are not the same anymore. They're everywhere. They're they're all existing at the same time. So to her. When when um, the boy comes in and, and she starts seeing uh, – she starts having memories of Matthew, it's certainly – you know, in her mind, she thinks if she can kill him, she can fix the timeline. Everything will be all good again. So I really enjoyed seeing that uh, that character arc that they put her in through this episode. Now – and especially the scene where she tells her younger self to just leave – uh, really hit home for me emotionally speaking and it was pretty reminiscent I thought of Christopher Nolan's Interstellar when Matthew McConaughey's character tries to get his daughter to get his younger self to stay and of course he can't so that was all great stuff I really enjoyed everything going on with Ruth in this episode um, another thing that I want to say off the top of my head was that uh, the character of Alan Pangborn at first I didn't know what to think of him I like Scott Glenn as an actor but him and Henry were kind of a little standoffish and I used to, I chose to side with Henry but with this episode and last week's episode, you really get to see that Alan was a good guy and he had good intentions, but his ultimate downfall was falling for a woman who was entangled with quite possibly some type of otherworldly being and, of course, leaving the boy in the, sh in the, in the, in the trunk of that car. So, you know, his character was he's – he's a tragic character and, and, and I thought that with his death at the end where, you know, the twist was that – uh, Alan is the one who gets shot instead of the boy. That was a real that was a real uh, punch to the gut, and I was like, man, that sucks to see. But at the same time, it makes sense because Alan Pangborn is a tragic character, and tragic characters in literature, they don't get a hero's death. They don't go out guns blazing. No, instead, this is some this is a death that fits a tragic character of Alan Pangborn. So I thought that it really felt uh, like it fit the story that they're telling so far in Castle Rock. Now, moving on from that, the tension in this episode was off the charts. Every time Bill Skarsgård towered over uh, Sissy Spacek, uh, because of the cliffhanger that we were left on last episode, I, was, I kept thinking to myself, something bad is going to happen to her. What's he going to do to her? So Bill Skarsgård is actually terrifying with or without the Pennywise makeup on. Um, we didn't see any of Henry in this episode except for in little flashbacks where we got to see just how close he actually was with Ruth as a child and just how much of a real downer uh, Matthew Deaver was. And I mean, I really don't blame little Henry for wanting him dead. But I imagine next episode, somehow, we'll see him get out of that uh, room that he's locked in. So overall, I think this episode was uh, was really good. Uh, a lot of great tension. Uh, love getting to, getting to know Ruth's character and just seeing her happy in some of those flashbacks. It was really nice because Again, just come on. I want to see these characters live a happily ever after. But, of course, that's not going to happen in, in, in this type of story. So uh, let's go ahead and move on now to some of the Easter eggs. Uh, there's a lot of similarities between Gerald's Game, another Stephen King property, and the events that are happening with Ruth in this episode. Everything from her buying expensive steaks to uh, the antagonist from Juniper Hills and uh, stray dogs and conversations with dead husbands. I mean there's a lot of parallels between her story in this episode and, of course, the story of the main character in Gerald's game. So moving on from there, though, the radio does warn people to avoid Augusta Turnpike, which is a nod to Mile 81, where a mysterious station wagon eats uh, visitors at a rest area along that road. So it's no Christine, <laughs> but it'll have to do. Uh, when Ruth sends out Wendell, uh, she tells him to go to the mall in Chester's Mill. 
Now, Chester's Mill is the town that gets cut off from the rest of the world in Under the Dome. So that's a nice little uh, Easter egg that we have for ourselves. And finally, Ruth reads Little Henry in one of the flashbacks, Hansel and Gretel, which is also the same book that Beverly Marsh is afraid of in the It novel, which leads to Pennywise posing as the witch from that book to scare her when she returns to Derry, Maine as an adult. So great episode again i love i'm loving ruth's uh, character arc thus far uh the character of alan was really good bill starzard is just amazing in this series can't wait to see what happens next episode can't wait to talk to you guys about next episode if you enjoyed this one if you have any thoughts please let me know in the comment section below i'd love to have a conversation with you and if you enjoyed this video please leave a like uh that really helps out my smaller channel and if you would like to perhaps consider subscribing to millennium movies i talk about all things horror movies Horror TV shows like Castle Rock and Stranger Things and all things alike, really. So, yeah, if you enjoy that type of content, I will see you all in the next one.